come on you Irons. 3-2 victory over our London rivals. What a result. Done a double over them. Cheers to everyone. A double rum and coke. Celebrate West Ham. It's been a long time since I've been able to enjoy a game. Much deserved. The fans deserved it. I think the manager and the players have deserved it. They've come on a lot of flack. There's been a big negative cloud over the club for, for many months and weeks. And we've done well. Um, double over Chelsea, so seemed to do well over them recently anyway. Looking at the team lineup, um, it was kind of the same. Haller wasn't expected to start, so Antonio started up there again. Um, Ogbena coming back was a big plus. Um, best defender this season, arguably, could be the hammer of the year. Um, good at sort of crosses and organising the back four. So the way the game went, yeah, we should have been sort of 1-0 um, up, really. Um, and I knew Antonio's going to get involved in it one way, and I've either going to handball or he'll bring someone down or he'll go offside. 50-50 again, because you don't get anything, you don't expect anything. Um, so again, common sense if Prevail should have been given, but they weren't going to give it. And then they go up the other end, you silly boy. Not quite to his best, Jup, the way he showed at the beginning when he first came in on a Pellegrini. He said he's still got a lot of work to do. He's a naughty tackle, a bit slow. Not much argument about that. So William put that one away. And Suchek um, had the offside goal ruled out, but came back in again with another goal. He's really making a name for himself in terms of coming up for corners and free kicks with that big, lanky frame of his. Being a nuisance, you know, that's really good. So that was 1-1. Went in half-time, I think. Uh, with the confidence up, when in one nil at half time would have been a bit cruel, I think. So one one really probably helped David's sort of half time sort of chat. Um, Lanzini is very average, and a lot of fans out there again were saying take him off, take him off. And um, to be fair, when he did go off, I mean, I don't think we missed him anyway. I don't know what's up with him. He seems off the pace. He had a good chance where he was put through, and he kind of curled it well over the post. He could have slipped someone else in, or kind of had a better attempt than that. Uh, and then we went 2-1 up. Great finish from Antonio. After a long time, I've seen him finish and score as well. So that was brilliant. Um, really good. And then obviously gave the free kick away. Right, I think, gave the free kick away. But when you're playing against Chelsea on paper, they're much better than us. You know, they're stronger, fitter. And we're just trying to be well organised, make sure we can keep them away from the goal as possible. But when they do run in through the channels and through gaps in the midfield, and obviously Right is, is the only one, we don't really have fast centre-backs or full-backs who can, who can come out and do that kind of job. So And good free kick. I think Gary Neville said that perhaps Fabianski wasn't well positioned, but it's one of those things. There's a great free kick, um, hit the post and crap back in. And that was 2-2. And being negative or being sort of realistic, I kind of said, I'll be happy with that. Or even a 3-2, 4-2 defeat. It's the way of thinking. I don't want to get thrashed because goal difference is a big thing. And I'm just trying to keep myself calm and, and see how it goes. And then, yeah, Malenko came on. So, David, well done on your substitutions. Uh, Wiltshire came on. Wiltshire, again, he doesn't really go looking for the ball I've seen him. He doesn't have that type of engine. He doesn't defend. He doesn't go forward. He sits in the middle and he waits for the ball. And we, could, we didn't find him. A lot of the times we kind of gave long balls over his head, missed him. So he needs to improve on that. He needs to look for the ball. You know, become available, screen for the ball, and he's the key between linking defend and attack. So he was, you know, pretty average. Yamalenko, I could tell Chelsea haven't done their homework. You know, he's, he's kind of not, he's kind of a one, one-track pony. He'll cut in, you know, on that same foot, and then we know how he can finish at Everton and Manchester United. And he tried it a couple of times, and when Antonio, brilliant pass, great weight on it, I knew that he's going to cut in, and he's got a one hell of a finish on him, one hell of a goal and that's the thing with him he's got a goal in him he might go missing for 20 minutes but he found the net and even then 2-2 two, two, I was okay thinking if we lose at least we gave a good shot but when you're 3-2 up you you know how much it means with four minutes left kind of had to leave the lounge but we done it got it over the line really happy let's enjoy it stop the negativity over David you know he's trying to do the best Haller will be back Hopefully some winnable games um, coming up now. Uh, we can drag ourselves out the bottom sort of three, four positions. Bournemouth without Callum Wilson for two games, I think are really showing their colours. They don't really, not doing much, I think. They're really struggling. Got fresh for one today, I think. So keep it up. Keep stick together. We can't all be premiership managers. I know we all think we are. So leave, leave it to David. He knows what he's doing. 
hopefully we can just about get, get over the line, even though last week I said in another channel that perhaps I felt it was all going against us, really, especially without Haller. So well done. Three points from three hard games. I'll take that. So let's be positive. Let's, whatever happens, stick together. Stop complaining about substitutions and playing sort of a jetty. We know a jetty can't do it. You know, a jetty and bloody silver. Keep silver back. We don't need him. How, Antonio, keep him fit somehow. Let's get over the line and stick with David and stick the fans together. Come on, you irons.